Hey folks, welcome back to Challenged. If you follow my channel at all, you know that I'm a huge fan of energy efficient building practices, especially when it comes to your home. Well, with all of the cold snaps that have been coming through, I mean major cold snaps where we're having negative temperatures here, I bet a lot of you are starting to get really expensive heating bills at this point. And it got me thinking, I've built a really efficient house and my bills just aren't bad at all. But I thought, is there a way that I can compare that to a house that's nearby that would be more traditionally built? Well, the good news is my dad lives only five miles away and has a traditional stick built house. So I thought, why don't we compare bills from his to mine? First, let's talk about the houses. My dad's house is a traditional built stick frame house with two by fours. So two by four walls with R13 insulation in those walls, typical blown in insulation in the attic. He's actually gone in and added more insulation on top of that. So it's probably around an R38 to an R40 up there. And he has uh, changed out windows and doors over time, done as much air sealing as possible. So it's probably pretty consistent with what a new build would be today. He has two heating and cooling systems within his house. One that does the bedrooms and one that does the main living area. The one that does the bedrooms has a SEER 13 air conditioner with an 80% efficiency furnace in it. But the one that does the living space has a 13 sear AC unit, but a 95% efficient furnace. And the way that my dad uses this is he has the bedroom set down several degrees lower than what the main living space is. So that main unit, that 95% efficient furnace is what heats the vast majority of the house. He's thinking that maybe only 10% of the heat actually comes from that other unit because it just doesn't come on very often. So the main furnace that he is using is 95% efficient and that's probably what's put in new builds today. But as you've gathered, he has electricity as well as natural gas. So he has two different bills. My house on the other hand, I only have electricity because natural gas was not an option out where I am. So it is a 6,000 square foot house, 3,000 in the main, 3,000 down in the basement. It was built using ICF construction, insulated concrete forms. It has an R40 value uh, insulation within the attic, and I use a geothermal unit inside of it for my heating and cooling. I have two of those units, one again that does the main living space and another that does the bedrooms. I keep those pretty darn close to the same temperature. In fact, my dad and I keep our houses about the same as well. On top of that, I also have a five kilowatt solar array on my garage. However, I am backing out. I am pretending that I do not have that solar array. So I've readjusted all of the numbers that I'm about to show you as if I don't have that solar system. But at the end of this, I'm gonna show you just how much that solar system offsets. One more note. My dad lives alone, so it's only him in the house. However, I have four people living in my house. And not only that, but I have this big gigantic shop that I also electrify, and it goes through the same meter that the house does, so I cannot take that out of it. So what you're gonna see is all of the electricity that my property uses versus what just my dad's house uses. So when I figured all of this, I added my dad's electric and gas bills together to come up with a total each month. And then of course I did my own electric as well. And I did this over three different years, 2021, 22, 23. So we have 36 months worth of data that we can look at. And when we combine all three years of that, the traditional house, my dad's house, cost $7,072.26. However, my house, the energy efficient house, which is way bigger than what his house is, again, 3,600 square feet versus 6,000 square feet, mine was only $6,037. So during that time period, my house, the bigger house, cost $1,000 less to heat and cool and electrify than the traditional house did. And if we look at this on a year by year basis, in 2021, you can see my dad's house is here in blue, my house is in orange. So during the summer months, my house costs a little bit more, but always during the winter months, my dad's house costs a lot more. So in 2021, his house cost $2,008 to heat, cool, electrify, mine cost 2,058. So technically mine was just a little bit more than his that year. If we go down to 2022, 
we're looking at a big difference. And it was because the price of gas went up at that point. Natural gas got real expensive. So his was $2,643 during the year, whereas mine was $1,967. Huge savings that year. And then the last year, 2023, the gas prices were still really high, so my dad's bills were a lot more expensive. He spent $2,419 during the year, whereas I spent $2,011 during the year. So as you can see, the energy efficient home definitely outperforms the traditionally built home. The only real differences here were the natural gas that my dad has to do, as well as the construction type with this. We live in the same climate, we're only five miles apart, and we have the exact same electricity provider. So the numbers indicate that my 6,000 square foot house would have about the same bills as that of probably a 3,000 square foot house. Now earlier, I did tell you I have solar, and of course everything that I've shared at this point takes the solar away from it. So let's add it back in. How much of a difference does that make? So again, over that 36 month period, it was $6,037 without the solar included. That's how much the, uh, the bills would have cost. But I got $2,375 worth of benefit from that solar. So that brought my bills down during that 36 month period to $3,661.62. So if we average that monthly, it's just over a hundred bucks a month. I have a whole bunch of videos within my library breaking down the different costs, the different energy efficiencies of each one of these type of technologies, the geothermal the solar, as well as the ICF. And yes, they do cost more and you're gonna to have to pay for that up front. But what I want you to remember is that when you build that, it does cost more, but your house is worth more proportionally to what you've spent on that. Those technologies increase the value of your home. So your payback period by installing these are instantaneous due to the increased value of your home. So don't get caught up in all of that. I still suggest that everyone put anything they can into energy efficiency. It pays you back every single month in very cheap living. You can live in a house like mine, which is gigantic, at least I think it is, and it costs so much less. Again, a hundred bucks a month is all that it costs. And these energy efficient products have benefits that go beyond just the reduced utility costs. There are so many more benefits that an ICF house gives you beyond those bills. Thank you guys for watching. If you wouldn't mind, hit that like button down below as well as subscribe and leave a comment telling me what are your bills as well as the size and construction of your home. I find it fascinating what others have. See if we can do as many comparos on this as we possibly can. Stay challenged, my friends.